Cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, do you want to, like, are we live? Do we want to get started? <laughs> Going live. Okay, about to go live. Well, give me the, give me the word when we're live. We're live. We're live. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Welcome to this 20th of April, 2022. Uh, Eco's live ecosystem session with Mike, I think Simon, although... <laughs> He'll be back. <laughs> He'll be back. And Philip. So, hey, guys, how are you doing today? Simon's just Great. getting his hardware ready. <laughs> getting his hardware ready. Okay, awesome. Well, we've got a few questions that... You know, <laughs> rattle through. Um, so, firstly, just just for context for someone watching, what is Ion or the Internet of Energy Network? Mike, maybe for you. Yeah, sure. So um, you can answer it four ways. So, first of all, it's a protocol for connecting devices within and amongst clean energy microgrids, enabling to transact with one another. It's also the the network itself, which is community driven to build an energy economy and it's powered by Holochain and blockchain on top. And it's also the organization behind the network. So we're here to build, promote, curate the open source code base. And finally, it's the token that the organization has and it's a true utility. In other words, there's network participation by buying the token and it goes right down to microgrids that transfer energy around. Okay, super. And then there's, there's also Redgrid. So how does Redgrid work with ION? Yeah, so Redgrid uh, was the original company, it's for profit. And now it's basically, um, it's on the ground. So we, we work with microgrids as Redgrid and create the use cases. ION provides this sort of global stage funding for these endeavors and encourages the innovation to be added back into the growing uh, code base. And we've always thought that Redgrid One would become, so the, the original name of Redgrid is Redgrid One that we always hope there'll be a red grid two, three, four in different parts of the world. And in fact, other competitors from an ion point of view to feed this, this growing uh, ecosystem. So it, the way it works is there's a service contract between ion and red grid. Got so it. Red grid provides stuff. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's really clear. And then how do you use Holochain in, oh, sorry, well, sorry, actually, why do you use Holochain instead of another protocol? And then maybe how you use Holochain? Yeah, if you, uh, if you search, especially Redgrid, but growing uh, ION you'll, and, and Holochain, you'll find that we kind of say the same thing every time. From my point of view, it's always been about the people. Uh, you guys are amazing and you're all dedicated to uh, the dream. There's, there's some pretty uh, dreamers out there, but everyone's committed to a, a better decentralized world. In terms of the tech, if you go to our website, ion.tech and click on blog, there's some medium articles that explain it. But basically, um, scalability, the agent-based architecture is what really gets me. So I got, that seems to be the only way. Um, and you can apply that to IoT world as well. So scalability, speed, I know you guys are just continuing to hit new all-time highs. Um, so high levels of microtransactions, which is, uh, Phil can show you a bit of that. Privacy is becoming a really growing thing, in the, especially in the energy market, but in all markets and security, and then of course costs. There's, there's no gas fees if, if you don't want them. And the executable keeps getting smaller. So uh, yeah, the last we talked to you, I think it was one meg that uh, we got built, I think built in one meg, so that's, that's amazing. So we're, yeah, we're looking forward to a small world for IoT devices. I would say it's also very power efficient compared to blockchain. Hmm. Cool, and then last time we chatted, you were telling us about this university collaboration. Uh, is there anything you, can, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because you're pointing to something super exciting, but couldn't say more. Yeah, we couldn't say more, <laughs> um, but we can now. And if you've been following us for a while, you probably guessed the answer. So there's, it's called Monash University in Australia. It's actually Australia's biggest university, and they have affiliates overseas, including campuses in Southeast Asia. And Redgrid did a project with them in 2020 and 2021. Uh, we then started to get into sort of intellectual property discussions and we actually reached an agreement. So um, that is what ION, the protocol has evolved into. 
And it's actually not bad for a company that when we signed on back in 2020, there was about four or five of us. So um, yeah, we're, we're pretty chuffed about that. And um, yeah, so what, what Monash set out to show was a, a full transactive energy market. And I could talk to you a lot about that, but it's basically a fully interactive dynamic means for um, offering and trading energy value. And Phil had this epiphany that it exactly maps to holo and holo fuel. So that's what he's done. He's, he's modeled that on for our initial protocol code base, which is pretty cool. I think the Monash stuff too, that it's, they really, um, their, their project, the Net Zero initiative of their Clayton campus is yeah, basically turning that entire campus into a microgrid. Um, and they really align well with our, um, with the agent-based approach, and they actually selected selected us probably primarily due to the to the whole chain the agent-based architecture. And they looked at different distributed energy protocols um, using blockchain and other software options, but they they really jazzed with the agent-based approach just for resilience and scalability and all those things Mike mentioned. So that was sort of validation of the, the, the seed that uh, that started this idea of the Internet of Energy protocol. So it's a really good partnership for us. And they're, they're keen to actually run with it with us as well and start to engage some of their, their faculty and their students and their researchers and help us develop the protocol together. And, um, and I think like what Phil will show a little bit um, shortly in the session is, is like a, a nice little starting point where we can start to engage some of that community so um yeah pretty exciting partnership for sure they actually uh, put us through the mill as well like in terms of testing um, they uh if you if everyone who's worked with whole chain for a while remembers before rsm so be sort of early 2020 2021 there was um yeah there, there was sim 2h which was they recognized as a centralized point and they wanted things fully dis decentralized so when um, RSM came along, it was kind of a godsend because it, it not only got rid of that, but the, the orders of magnitude in terms of performance, just it was through the roof and it continues to get better. Um, again, if, if you look under, uh, I don't know what you Google, probably Monash, Red Grid, uh, you'll find an article on that. Super. Okay, cool. Uh, oh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, so with Monash, um, we've come up with this idea which applies to uh, remote communities and that sort of stuff is this idea of like a kit built solar system so you can buy you can buy all this stuff from an electronic store which is what um sim's going to show you in a minute but you can buy the kit like um just like solar panels some batteries and a couple of um you know charge controllers and then you hook that up to a raspberry pi and then you've got an entire solar management system running on holochain and then you don't have to worry about things like consumer data rights because you've got your own data. So you don't have to worry about who's actually holding all that data for you. Um, and also the idea of then um, people in the city having an idea for a remote community and going out and trying it and going, that's completely not the right thing. And that happens all the time. If we sell kits and bits and pieces, people can go, oh, cool. You know what I really need? I need four of those and two of those and put it together. Oh, super. So it's nearly Earth Day. Well, just how big do you think the Internet of Energy Network protocol's impact on the environment could actually be? Um, yeah, so I remember, I'm older than some of the people on this call, and I remember some of the old Earth Days. Uh, Ion was born on a global stage, so like we hit this, the scene. And we work closely with universities, not just Monash, but all over the world and others in the industry. And we're, something I've realized doing this in the last month is that we're just ahead of the curve on every aspect. So like a lot of the big players are, are trapped in web two central server cloud mentality and energy retailers never took the time like we did to work deeply with average householders on how they use their energy. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're, I think we've said this before that we're, we're pretty mission driven. Uh, we do want to see a better earth <laughs> Of, of the end of this and we just need to get the word out we have friends from all over the world and we believe and i think they believe so yeah that's the message 
I think like also it's it's an interesting one in energy because there's got so much focus on big battery farms and big solar uh, commercial solar arrays and these type of things uh, putting a dent in, and um, having an impact and they do have a massive impact these these big systems but that there's such an enormous amount and again this is where the agent based stuff comes in and the ability to have a lightweight software behind the meter and having devices that you and I own transacting and, and moving the way they use energy is such a huge um, a huge uh, opportunity and part of the transition of energy. Like as part of one of our projects with, um, with uh, Red Grid for this neighbourhood battery initiative, we, we did some profiling that showed that by engaging people behind the meter with appliances, like changing the time you do your dishwasher, for example, or changing the time you turn on the tumble dryer, or the, um, that you can reduce the size of the battery that is needed for that community by more than 50%. And that's like a huge amount of productive capacity that can be used for other things or, or um, lower the cost of that asset for that community to to become a fully renewable community, you know? So uh, I think like it's, it's actually a, I think it's like a fundamental part is that the, the little small adjustments and changes that you can enable with this agent-based transactive energy system is, that's where the action's at, I, I kind of feel. Um, so it's, North. yeah, it's huge. Also with the, um, the idea of having lots of batteries in the substations, then you can stabilise the grid as well. So you can put a lot That's more right. generated power into the grid before it flips out. The problem at the moment is that the, the way the economy works is that you have these large producers and they've got all this massive infrastructure and they don't want to change anything because they're making yeah. us brilliant. If we introduce a local community peer-to-peer -peer trading system using the batteries in the substations as a point, you literally remove all of the need for fossil fuels at all. Absolutely. Yeah, what, was that, what was that stat you had about uh, community batteries? So this was pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah I think that's... 2,400, but with the substations, I think there's like 5,000 substations just in Victoria. It means you mm. can have a lot smaller batteries and a, yep. a more, more distributed system. Wow. Absolutely. Very cool. All right, so let's jump into. So the answer is big, but also like like everything, there's a uh, yeah, there's a, but but it's easier for people to see and experience those like big infrastructure plays as having the massive difference. It's easier to see that than this, right. but over time, this yeah, pretty powerful guys. Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's the same story with with things like hollow as well. It's it's. What difference can the individual make? And it, it's it's yeah, it's hard to tangibly see that difference. But once you once once we combine our activities, you know, heck yeah, we can make a difference, and we make the biggest difference of all. You know, yep. it's the same with energy as in hosting with Hollow. So, yep. Except there's one difference between those two things. If you go out in the public and start talking about web hosting and blah blah blah, people just go. What are you talking about? And yep. if you say electricity, everybody gets it. Yep. That's it. Very cool. Okay. So let's have a look at what you bought. Well, firstly, a little bit of an oversight and maybe a little bit of a look of what you've built in the last, I don't know what it is, month or a couple of months since we last chatted. Mm, it's like four weeks, I think. Uh, is that me first? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Well, I know, like, as a bit of overlay, so, like, for example, you've launched the protocol. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, a, there's a few things going on. So, so, it's been a pretty hectic, hectic month for sure. So, the big one is the, the protocol, the, the launch of the protocol. That was, um, um, and we've just sort of been really working hard to, to take that to the next level and and what Phil is about to show us, make it accessible to 
to everyone. I guess that's that's been our real core focus because energy is such a complex and confusing thing and it's caught up with regulations and they're different in every jurisdiction and everywhere you go, you know. Um, so we, we've been really grappling with this problem. How do we, how do we give people the tool, every, every, the average, the normal developer or the, or someone with an idea, the tools they need to test and try some application and implement it in a sandbox and then like unconstrained by all this nonsense that's in the existing energy system. So that's been a real focus, but yeah, we, there's been a lot of a few other little projects as well. We've been working on as well. We've been working with a company called Mesh Power in um, um, in as part of a campaign for our first hundred grids connected to the Ion Protocol. Awesome. Um, uh, and we've been working on a, a pretty um, an interesting use of the Ion Protocol and the Ion Token for NFT and staking um to to support some capital for that for that grid and and it's actually a it's a refugee camp in rwanda that we've been able to raise some capital to support a, a solar array in in their marketplace area um Amazing. which we're pretty proud of um and on the red grid side we've been working really hard on this i keep rabbiting on about community battery but um yeah, on a community battery project and we're working, um, we've got a few sprints underway and planned to really tightly integrate the ION protocol and the token into our existing field-based implementation and that um, in that area, which will be like, that'll be a big deal for ION um, in terms of utility and the token and, um, and, and use of the, use of the token and um, amount of holders of the token as well. So, so they've been our main ones, but I'll probably let Phil jump into this. Um, and the, so we're calling it Pico Grid is the working name, but um, yeah, it's exactly. a hello world. I still like Pico Grid. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> more than a hello world. Because one, <laughs> of the, one of the big problems with what we're doing is regulations. Like how, do you get a, like how do you do this stuff and not be illegal with the way you can't just throw a extension cord over your neighbor's fence and like hook it up right but you can if you're say a refugee camp or a remote community where there's literally no laws because people are just doing whatever to survive if we the idea with these um pico grid uh kits was that we could supply them to let's say ukraine right they've gone from first world country everybody's got connected phones everything next moment no power no internet uh, and no communications. So, and they've all grouped in like refugee camps because they're refugees, right? So if we were able to supply them with these kits where people could just go, hey, I can do that. You can get a solar panel and a battery with a hollow chain on it. And now you've got solar power, communications, and people can now start trading, like they can help each other out. Some people can build these things, some people can't. So those people can you know, make a bit of income in the refugee camp with our token that they can then trade for all sorts of stuff. And now you've got this, you've taken out the um, problem of having uh, regulations because there are no regulations now. And now people can actually implement real peer-to-peer -peer power and communication. Cool. And then I when the war finishes in a few years' time, Guess what? They've already got a distributed power and communication system. Right. Amazing. Do you want to take us under the hood then? Yeah. So um, one of the big things with this is that it's quite complicated doing power stuff. I mean, I had the Tesla guys out here today fixing up my power wall because there's some something wrong with it. Um, and so what I wanted to do is give people a step into joining ION as the community side of things before they need any kind of hardware or technical knowledge or anything. So it's literally just joining our community. Um, so the demo I'm gonna show you is, uh, this is an Electron app, it's got Holochain running inside it, like uh, Connor set up. And this is going to, um, we're gonna register as an agent and then show you a few bits and pieces. And then I've got the Pico grid uh, solar system running on, a, on another Holochain conductor as a separate agent. 
and that's going to be logging uh, some dummy data at the moment that comes out of the system that Sim's going to show you, which is actually real hardware with lights and stuff on it. Um, and I also just want to show you the Holochain conductor again, uh, the playground. So what you can see here is these are two agents that are uh, logged. So these are the actual cells running in different, different conductors. And you can see they're at the different, there's one here and one here. So they're two different running conductors and talk to each other. And you can see they just got agent entries in there. So what we're going to do is go back to the app and we'll do the standard registration stuff, which at the moment is um, not using the central um, profiles and personas thing that I was building last year. And yeah, we're going to join up now. And right, so now we've got, this is a really simple way for people to join the community, right? You come in, you're just registered, and now we're gonna have an inbox system where people can send, it's kind of like emails, but kind of like chat, kind of like forum, but running on Holochain. Um, is it using the same stuff as Eric's been doing with Snapmail or like a different approach? I haven't touched Holochain for nearly a year. Yep. <laughs> Up until I started working at Redgrid again, or Ion. So I'm catching up on all of that cool stuff that people have been building. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so, but yes, any of that stuff will be right. So I'm using but, the... Yeah, go, sorry, go. Uh, I'm using the profiles stuff from uh, Holochain Dev Community. Yep. Just, just if I can jump in there too, Phil, like that, that um, the inbox, uh, that communication tool is what we're finding in, in these sort of community battery and community renewable projects it's actually a real gap in the yeah. the solutions. Like they can't communicate with they they lack a way to communicate with one another and and um, make announcements and and that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, that that's been a real interest in that realm for sure. Yeah, exactly. And so one of the things that I'm going to do is like in um, the Acorn app, you, when you start a new project, that's a new DNA or new DHT, right? So it's a unique one just for the people that you invite. That's going to be the same system here. So when you uh, say I want to send an email to the people in this group, that would be one DHT, but a different, like if I'm sending one to my family, that's a different DHT. So um, then you get real privacy. Anyway, let's go back to the fun part. So <laughs> after mucking around, <laughs> we were looking at how do we actually like visualize what's going on? So I based this energy simulator, so you can run in two modes. So remember, this is for people who uh, do and don't have solar batteries, whatever they may have. Um, so in the simulator mode, you can see what things are going to be like. So I can say, uh, let's say my house is currently using, oh, let's have a look. My house is using 1.5 kilowatts. So, That's live. Um, <laughs> uh, <that was> my <laughs> Uh, and no solar, but it's drawing from the battery a little bit. Right, so it's a good starting point. So what when I start this simulator, every five seconds it counts on an hour, right? So, <clears throat> and what it's doing is it's logging that data into a graph for us. So we can say in a few hours time, I completely run out of battery and I'm drawing power from the internet of energy before the grid. So the, the grid represents like your normal retailer and Internet of Energy is the peer-to-peer -peer trading. So let's so say there's a spike in power at midnight, and you can see I'm using some grid power as it goes to the next day. Because I did all my washing at night, and I used my dishwasher and everything because of the Powers app from Red Grid that tells you, you know, what's a good time to start using these things. And then in the morning, when the sun comes up, actually start generating some solar, which is going to charge the battery for a little while. I've got a big system, so these are actually relatively good numbers. Get up to here, All right? So this is now batteries charged. And you can see I'm selling power back to the Internet of Energy now. You've kind of touched on it, Phil, but I guess what it's showing is left to right sort of the order of use. So you have a house that's drawing and then you go to solar, you go to your local battery 
If you don't have a local battery, you can go to the Internet of Energy. And then the last resort is back to the national grid. That's right. So when you're selling to the Internet of Energy, you're actually charging up all the local community batteries yep. for other people to draw down on. Right, so the sun's going down a bit. Getting late in the afternoon. Oh, it's Melbourne, so we'll go to zero. Right, and now we're using the battery again. A couple of hours. And then I run out of battery and we're back on to using the uh, Internet of Energy again. Oops. Right. So that was just the, uh, so the, that data I can get from, so you can simulate it there and see how, you know, what's this gonna look like? That's what I was thinking. Then you can switch it to monitor mode, which is what I'm working on right now. And the idea of that monitor mode is that'll actually pick up this live data from, if you've got a, uh, system. So you can see here that my battery is discharging and powering the whole house. What's really neat is you can get access to the API and um, you can get this instant data. So I can just refresh this and you can see that that's the time now. Um, my battery is 1.5 kilowatts being used, which you can see there. And the load down here is about one and a half kilowatts as well. And solar, I look at that, none, because it's middle of the night. Right, so that's the monitor mode, which, I can, which I'll set up soon. Now, <clears throat> the Pico grid side of things is gonna be a lot more fun. So let's kind of look at the mm -hmm. playground again. And now you'll see that this user, when they, or this person, sorry, participant, um, you can see I logged my actual um, profile there. And these are some entries on the DHT. If we now go to um, the Pico Grid app, which I'll just quickly show you what it's going to do, so I can get a bit of sense. Um, so the one Sim is going to show you actually hooks up to different uh, hardware, um, batteries and solar panels and stuff like that. I'm running a dummy mock one at the moment, and essentially what this is going to do, it just loops through and it'll send uh, on the uh, web socket this uh, information about um, the different devices that I'm connected to. And then, so if we run that now, <clears throat> and go back to the playground. I should see. Yeah. I love demos. All right, I'll break it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's try that again. Okay. number change. <laughs> I typed in the wrong one. As you do. No pressure. <laughs> I like pressure. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's go and start up again. Right. Here we go. And connect up to it. There we go. Much better. There we go. All right. So now if we want to look in here should see where they go. Oh, here's all the entries here. Right. Um, no. What else broke? No, we're actually going in there.
and seven on eight. Oh, is there? All right, that is, <laughs> um, yes, yeah, because they're connected to an old one. That's right. Anyway, what I was supposed to show you was that um, it creates all these logged entries, which you can see they're actually getting created because this is the hashes coming back from Holochain. Um, but because the port changed, the playground is not hooked up to it at the moment. Um, but yeah, so the outcome of that is that now we've got a way to log the data from whatever devices you're connected to into Holochain. And this is running on my local uh, home network system. So I've got my Internet uh, of Energy app here so that it'll be connected to it. And then the actual devices are connected as well. Really good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I can show you that. Did you did you want to do any more on that, Phil? Or you want, I know. I'm done. Just, my, um, yeah. yeah. So I guess like the um, not everyone's got the Tesla Powerwall at home. So so like one of the things that we've um, that system that that Phil just showed the dashboard and the the simulation and the tool and all the rest of it. Um, um, part of one of the challenges that we've had is to try and make make these things accessible and, and real to, for, for everyone so they can simulate a real renewable environment. So we've, we've been working with, um, and this will be all part of the open source um, uh, libraries, uh, all the setup and um, instructions for people to set this system up for themselves. But I'll do some really, this is really terrible camera work here. Oh, actually, I've got to take my background off first, don't I? Wait a sec. Um, um, so, yeah, one of the one of the things we've been doing is is basically setting up a a grid on a Raspberry Pi in, in effect. So the the um, the scene is that you we've set up a system on a Raspberry Pi whereby there's um, there's a few agents. So there's three homes that are simulated. Two um, or three three energy consumption devices that are simulated, two energy storage devices that are simulated, and two energy generation devices that are simulated. So the the sort of main scene that we've been working on is uh, a street with three homes. One of those homes has a battery and solar array on its roof. Um, and there's a neighbourhood battery and a neighbourhood solar generation array. Um, uh, setting that all up on a Raspberry Pi device and interfacing with the, that dashboard and that solution that, um, that Phil just mentioned. So you can actually see, um, see physically when, when the home is consuming energy from the grid or from the battery or from solar, you can actually see when this battery is charging or discharging. You can see when a, one of these homes is selling um, energy to the grid uh, through that mechanism that Phil just showed. So let me try and just change my background and I'll see if I can swing my um, camera around. It's a bit dark, I'm in the office, so... Um, so this is going to be the most horrendous demo ever, but um, <laughs> I'll, sh I'll show you, I'll let it run. But basically there's um, a Raspberry Pi here and this is our home and it's consuming from the grid. Now it's consuming from the battery. Our battery is charging. All these, all these actors in the system are, are going to be set up on this um, uh, able to set up in this system um, and then connect it with that front end. We haven't got to the connection to the UI yet, but we're, we're getting there fast. So, um, um, but basically apart, it's some fancy flashy lights at the moment, not really telling you much, but um, effectively what we're going to be putting in the library is, is the instruction set. So anyone can go in, uh, download, uh, uh, run that 
run that interface that Phil just meant, showed, set up, set up a physical version of their application and demonstrate it without the constraints of a of an actual physical grid. Um, and, and we're it's we're pretty excited about it because it's it it's actually um, it's coming in very handy for, for a lot of the projects that I mentioned earlier. Like we're actually already using it to um, to start to prototype and showcase physically and take to our customers and take to people who don't understand um, the code or the tech the um, or hollow chain. We can actually physically show them. A, a real working system, um, um, so it's it's really useful in that respect, and and it's actually um, a pretty we think it might be a pretty useful thing as well, just generally for the hollow chain ecosystem and developer community because the little LEDs and the little flashy lights that we and the agents that we represent on this board in this system can be used to represent. A raft of other applications outside of just energy, you know. So, um, so yeah, it's a, it, that's what we've been working on. We're right now, like I'm coming from the the hardware, setting up the hardware um, side for this Pico Grid setup, um, and Phil's Phil's um, doing the Hollow Chain and the the um, UI and dashboard side, and we're we're about to um, um, start the integration process pretty shortly so um hopefully if you if you have a look at our github um the iron tech github you'll see that there, there's going to be a bit of a flurry of activity as that sort of story comes together and we'll start to share that in our discord so everyone can um, just go and download the code and um and and it's it's pretty there's there's not much kit involved it's just a raspberry pi and a breadboard and some cables and some um a few little components from a um, electronics uh, shop. So, so yeah, we're, that that's the main thing we've been working on um, from the protocol side to make it accessible to everyone. Uh, just just to add really quickly. So uh, one thing we haven't announced yet is, but we want we want to attract more developers. So we're just working out the the kinks of a bounty program, and um, we'll we'll have to figure that out. So we won't announce it just yet. Didn't hear it from me. Uh, the other thing is that ION is the full ecosystem. So, uh, you know, the biggest innovation is in Holochain, but we also have this blockchain that sits on top. And so I've been working on uh, the test net, which would be a faucet so you can get fake ION tokens. And that feeds to a DAO, which is decision makers. And that then feeds into uh, Phil and Sim's world, which is uh, into the, the micro DAO or the DNA, if, if you're familiar with Holochain. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a big picture here. Yeah, and uh, just to, on our naming convention here, like um, so, you've got the grid, and then what we call a micro grid is like a, a number of usually houses or buildings. So you know, up to a hundred is kind of like a micro grid that are usually connected to a substation. Then nano grid is like my house with a solar battery, etc. That's its own grid. So we went with this idea of pico grid, which is the next level. <laughs> of, you know, you put it on a table. And the great thing about that is that uh, when we're doing demonstrations and trying to explain to people what it is actually doing here, we can go to like a meeting with the actual hardware and bits and pieces and give people uh, a demonstration that they can install the app on their phone or a laptop or whatever, and actually be part of the demonstration. And then when we leave, we leave it all with them so that by the end of the um, meeting or session, We've trained them and shown them how to use it in such a way that they can then go and expand on it or go and show other people how to use it. And it's actually a useful thing. So part of the idea of just joining the community is if you come to one of these sessions of ours and you join up, now you're part of the communication system, even if you don't have any hardware to go with it, which means that you're still involved. Yep, I really like it. Just to answer a question in the chat. So nanogrids, um, we actually met this expert from Berkeley, uh, California. And um, it, what Phil said is correct. It's all about inside a building. So uh, we just coined the phrase PicoGrid and Sim was looking for a better one. I still think it's great. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll stick, but. Any suggestions, feel free to. Um, 
put them in, in the terms of microgrids. Yeah. In terms of microgrids, there is quite a uh, quite a growing industry now. Uh, Phil's mentioned off grid. There's also people trying to connect to the grid, which is a lot more complicated. Um, but yeah, there's microgrids. There, there was also a term mini grid, which um, I think has kind of gone away. I'm not sure. There's certainly a lot more microgrid talk out there and emerging standards. So it's very early days, but we're pretty excited to be here. Oh, I figured out what was wrong with my demo too. I've got multiple <laughs> multiple DNAs running in the app. And I'm still trying to figure out how to get the playground to actually hook up. So that's why I can see the profile stuff, but not all the logging thing that I did. Uh, one thing I just want to mention is uh, I actually had some time over Easter because that, that's that's pretty amazing in itself. But um, I went through all of the dev pulses from Holochain from 2022. There's just so much happening. So um, people who are familiar, version back in January was 00122. Now they're up to like 135. And there's things on Holochain's roadmap that I'm really looking forward to. There's this thing called stable validation, which allows you to separate out sort of deterministic stuff from the business logic. And that will play into, uh, if anyone saw our last demo that Phil did, he talks about supply agreements and that's all the business rules behind it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I won't get into all the details, but I'm pretty excited about that. And that's, that's uh, imminent. There's a lot of things that have been talked about over the last couple of years and just wham, <laughs> Holochain has started to deliver them. So pretty yep. exciting. Yeah, talking yeah. of exciting, I went upstairs this afternoon and my wife, Lucy, said, what are you doing? I said, I'm having fun. She's like, how are you doing? Because <laughs> <Yeah, I'm really laughs> now I actually get to like implement Holochain on hardware and do something that's like actually really, really tangible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like I, I'm in the same boat, Phil, like with the... the that's why the Pico grid stuff is so exciting because it's, mm. it's kind of... You can you make the, this. The energy is so sort of abstract, and and it gets caught up in all these conversations and and concepts. But, you can, but when you can actually see, show, um, and it and uh, um, and build it like like a lot of the applications, as I say, with with Red Grid that we're working on at the moment, you can actually. I can show Adam and the team and like say, here, here it is, guys. This is this is the power of Hologen and this is the power of uh, this is what this looks like look, working. Um, yeah, it's super cool and fun, heaps of fun. So mm -hmm. wow. Just typing in the, the chat, so uh, maybe I'll just talk about it. Um, yeah, so one thing that we're getting a lot of feedback from industry and energy industry, but any industry, is privacy and um, security. So um, critical infrastructure like big energy grids are a target. And that's what's kind of cool about microgrids is, you know, they're not because <laughs> they're just little. So there's no big impact if you're a bad guy and um, you're trying to make a point. It doesn't really matter that much. Having said that, Holochain's, and again, agent-based architecture, hides that behind the agent. So you have complete control. And I know Phil can talk hours on this stuff. But um, yeah, so that, that's like a big concern in if you talk to traditional energy people. And yeah, we've got the answer. So pretty excited about that in, as well. <laughs> it's also like mm -hmm. attack surface as well. Like exactly. there's, um, yeah. yeah, there's not a honeypot to attack in hollow chain. You, you yep. kill an ant yep. and another one moves in its place, you know? So I exactly. think that's that's one of the interesting things. Well, that's why I remember the last week when we were talking about Ukraine, it's like, so the Russians are coming yeah, yeah. bomb their power, bomb their communications and bomb their airports yeah. and destroy the country in a matter of weeks. Now, mm. if we were to implement this idea and actually give people solar powered kits with Holochain, then you've got this distributed power and distributed and you can't take the whole thing out. You literally would have to bomb the whole country to take out their power system and to take out a communication system. And, and, and we shouldn't underestimate Elon Musk like with Starlink, which is a mesh network in the sky. It's that same principle. Like he, you know, early on brought in some dishes, which 
are you know not hugely expensive, and yeah, they still have communications. And um, was it? I don't know what what was it about three years ago in South Australia here. We had another extreme weather event and knocked out all the towers, and the whole state of South Australia had no power. And it was like for a week or something. It was horrendous. Elon Musk said, "I will get this into within a hundred days. I'll provide community batteries for you." And now, uh, South Australia is the renewable energy source. When things get bad, we all buy from South Australia, so it's it's paid it back uh, many times over. Our media doesn't really talk about it because they have other interests, but that's a different topic. <laughs> yeah, all the reporters. <laughs> <laughs> so what 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 can we look? For? Yeah, what what do we look forward to over the next month or two? Well, I'm going to hook up that uh, Tesla gateway data into what we built, and start logging that into Holochain. Um, is the first thing. Yeah, got, I think like we, from the. Sorry, MG. Um, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say. So yeah, probably, probably the big one is um, uh, a lot of this Pico Grid stuff that we we spoke we've spoken about today, and the um, the code that Phil's shown is is already on on GitHub, and that's already open for anyone to to come along and run and. Um, and contribute to, uh, but that'll be will be there'll be a lot of um, change happening in that space and, and a, a lot of um, instructional content as well. So we can so developers can come in and and actually sort of build that build the kit end to end that we've just spoken about and shown today, and then customize it to however you need for your own application. You know, yep. so that that's probably a um, that'll be a big focus and the place to watch for that will be on the the probably the discord channel we'll we'll um let everyone know as we progress through that but just keep checking github and star our github as well if you can yep. um so the next so that, that's oh, sorry yeah that's that's a big one um and then obviously the the other the other big one in terms of the real field-based implementation is is this um is a couple of projects that we're working on. Um, one we're calling a clean miner project, which is um, uh, an interesting that. one coming up. <laughs> um, uh, and there's also um, the red grid neighborhood battery integration of ION, um, uh, like into that actual commercial project and that, that the neighborhood battery real implementation. So that's, that's a two one, but the, the Pico grid stuff is probably the big place to watch. Um, um, and that'll be probably the interesting one to the developer community. Uh, the other one that I mentioned too, David, I think MG mentioned before as well, is this contributor program that we'll yep. be launching. So uh, we'll be really starting to ramp up our, our GitHub and, and placing, um, using the issues um, uh, capability in GitHub and that sort of stuff and starting to engage the community for um, to help us with some of the, the coding activity and development activity as well. So um, keep an eye on Discord as, again for that one uh, and we'll, we'll have more to say on that soon, but that'll um, uh, be an interesting one for developers too, I think. We, we, act, we actually have a lot of stuff and the red grid side being a commercial company, we can't talk about it until it's well and truly out, but I will talk about things that we've already talked in this session. So clean miner, watch the space. It's up to Sim if he wants to say more, he probably doesn't, but this is going to be pretty amazing. And uh, I forgot what the other one was. So it'll come to me just when somebody else starts talking. So. Just with the Pico grid kit, um, this is an actual solar panel. Oh, wow. So the idea is we get these hobby-sized solar panels, a uh, charge controller, and of course your yeah, 1.5 volt battery, and on a breadboard. And actually, so then you can get like your grow lights. Of course, everybody's got grow lights, right? And um, shine it on your solar panel and actually like have a, a much more realistic um, representation too. 
Yep, okay. I mean, it's pretty cool. I guess what yeah. I'm seeing is like deep technical strides made at hardware and infrastructure levels um, with a commercial arm in red grid and in a market segment that's really looking for this, where, as you guys said earlier, you're quite a bit ahead, both in philosophy, vision and execution. And then, you know, this, so I like these, these, this is, it's exciting for me just to see even the build in in a month, both at the technical level, but also, you know, in the confidence and clarity. And I guess like, I just, yeah, I'm, that's, it's very powerful to see that. I, I made a list of all the things that we're, okay. we were playing in and every one of them is not quite here yet. Like we're ahead yeah. of everything. So, you know, you can talk about crypto, clearly that's, that's on its way or it's, it's here now. Um, microgrids, people don't know too much about those yet. Batteries yep. in general are, you know, it's all changing. Community batteries, um, <laughs> Holochain, Decentralized, Web3. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're combining all these things and we're doing it commercially. So, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yep. Yep, agreed. And again, being ahead of the curve, when you're in an unregulated space like a remote community where there are no rules, there is no curve, right? So we can just go. That's why this Pico grid idea is so good for us is we can actually build the whole thing end-to-end -end with no no, um, no regulations and just go, look, it works. This is how the whole system works. And then go and implement okay. it because there's probably going to be a few more wars around the world, I reckon. And there's plenty of remote spaces in Outback WA that could do with um, power that they own and look after. That's that's something that we don't push too much in, in terms of support or making a sale is that you don't need a lot to pro do proof of concept. It, you know, traditionally, like the big Ericsons and stuff, they come in and they've got this massive thing that they got to implement just to get to the starting line. We can do it with two Pico grids, smart plugs, whatever, like small and work up. And again, agent agent based architecture. And again, yeah, like you said, there with the, the big companies coming in with a big solution and then forcing that solution onto the community. When you, when you build it as pieces, you know, it's like, here's as much Lego as you could possibly ever use. Go and build whatever the hell you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. And then a whole world fills in those gaps. Yes. As which is, what, which yeah. is again, exactly which is what I'm saying, which is where Red Grid, Red Grid Run, as you point to, Red Grid 2, et cetera. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I'm really looking forward to the first. This is awesome, guys. So thank you. I'm sure people watching this are going to be pretty excited, whether it's live or on replay as well. And again, when people come back and be like, well, you know, in 24 months' time when these amazing things are happening, they can come back and look at this like, wow, these guys were thinking at every level and here's how hardware stuff started unfolding. So it's really cool to just that you're prepared to show under the hood and and communicate in this way. Um that's a really good point because we have an NFT um, program going as well where the idea is, is that when you get in early, then you can see the NFT uh, artifact actually changing over time as we're building things and as the yeah. money that's invested, especially in like the uh, Rwanda and refugee camp. That, that was the bit I was going to talk about. <laughs> oh, cool. No, no, go for it. Well, there, there you go. No, 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 no. No, 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 you go for it. That was it. I mean, I, I just wanted to bring up the, you know, the clean miner, which we'll talk about in a future session and the NFT, which uh, I, I've, I've seen all the marketing material that we want to get out. So um, yeah, that'll happen as well. Yeah. Like it's a real good point though. What you raised, Phil, is yeah, that with the NFT thing, the idea being that it, uh, the, as we get to this hundred connected grids goal, the, the actual, um, it evolves over time. So like that taking everyone on the journey with us as we grow and build this thing from the ground up is, is like a real important part philosophically for us. So, um, yeah, and that's where the, this, the, the protocol and the Pico grid stuff is like a really nice launch pad for that because it gives everyone the ability to apply their creativity to this initial starting point. Um, it's not just our brains working on it. So, um, so yeah, it's, 
it's it's a pretty cool development, I think. I really love the accountability side of it and that people invest in the NFT and they can actually see where that money went and what we built with it in the in the asset that they bought. And then they can trade that and go, hey, check out mine. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that an NGO with accountability. <laughs> Sorry, being sarcastic. <laughs> okay. Pretty cool, guys. Well, hopefully see you in another few weeks. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, jump on jump on the Discord. Anyone who's watching and wants to damn us or or chat with us or whatever and um and uh yeah definitely the the ion ion dash tech github um uh, the link links on our website anyway but um uh if anyone's if anyone's a developer and um and looking to get involved or or has any ideas or feedback share away and jump on board because we're keen to hear it so Yeah, I'm just jumping on. I mean, for those of you watching, jumping on the website, so clear and clean communication. So you can just start imagining all of these, all of these tools one by one coming online, all these successes, people replicating in their own way, composing applications in their way. Very powerful stuff. So, yeah. All right. Super. Thanks. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Sim. Amazing stuff. And yeah, hopefully see you in another three to four weeks. You bet. We'll be no here. No worries. Absolutely. Thanks, David. Thanks, guys. Thanks, David. See you later. Good night or good morning. <laughs> <laughs>